Hello and welcome to Blytheway Business News. Today we're joined by Steve Curtis, Chief Executive of Caledonia Mining, which operates the producing gold mine, the Blanket Mine in Zimbabwe. This morning, uh, Caledonia has announced another increase in its dividend. I mean, it's up by, I think, 13% to 8.5 cents. Steve, this is a, a mark of confidence. Uh, tell us how you're feeling this morning. Yes, Tim, um, uh, lovely to talk to you again. And um, it, it is a very nice way to start the week that uh, we are able to, to announce a, a further increase in our quarterly dividend. And you're right, we've increased the dividend to eight and a half cents a quarter. And um, this is the second time we've been able to do it this, this, this year. And um, it, it's very good. Uh, it's, uh, it's what we had planned because we're at a stage of our expansion uh, project. And uh, it's, it's really nice that even in the, in the times of uh, COVID and lockdowns, we are in an industry which is enabling us to, to pay back to shareholders uh, in, in, in this way. And it's, it, it feels very, very good, Tim. I the dividend's up 13% on the previous one. Looking back, uh, it's just something like 24% uh, since October of last year. Um, remarkable progress, very good progress, commendable progress. Um, the dividend's still only costing you something like $4 million per year at these current rates. So I know you're not allowed to make forecasts, Steve, but you must be confident that there's more to come from Caledonia. Well, Tim, you know, people who are familiar with the numbers, um, uh, quite right, you're saying that uh, the current dividend as it stands uh, costs the company $4 million a year. Um, we have been spending $20 million on the CapEx project over the last five years. So that at our production levels at the moment, which we're forecasting 53 to 56,000 ounces this year, that indicates that Blanket, even at, at, the, at this level of production, is generating way in excess of $20 million because we've invested that in CapEx and we've paid the dividend and we've managed to build up our cash pile. Now we are coming to the stage of the expansion project where um, we are finishing the shaft and our gold production is going to ramp up to 75,000 ounces, then 80,000 ounces. So the $4 million dividend um, is so adequately covered by cash flows that this business is going to generate as CapEx falls off, um, that uh, it's, it's, it's a great place to be. And shareholders have not had an increase in dividend apart from these two increases f over the last five years while we've been investing. And it's time that uh, the shareholders uh, reap some of the benefits of the the fact that we're in a sector that's got a high gold price, we are coming into declining capex environment. Um, we we are we are producing more gold. So our other stakeholders in the business, uh, Zimbabwe revenue authorities, uh, are, are going to get more taxes from us, more royalties from us. So it's an all-round package uh, that that uh, the stakeholders in Caledonia are starting to benefit from. So it's very nice to be able to reward shareholders for their patience. So you, you mentioned there the central shaft, which I know you started some five years ago. Uh, you've funded that construction entirely by from cash flow. You've not to borrow money or take shareholders money, entirely funded by cash flow. When's that gonna be finished? Later on this year? Um, yes, Tim, we are in the, the stage of equipping uh, at the moment. We finished sinking the shaft last year. We are equipping now, and remember that the shaft is 1,200 meters deep. Um, so the equipping process is, is a years long exercise, um, but uh, the anticipation and our planning says that it'll be finished during Q4 of this year. Then you go into the commissioning phase, which is a, which is a phase of um, learning how to use all the new machineries, um, getting, getting all the principles and protocols of, of operating a completely different shaft structure um, going. 
and um, and 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 then and then we're off to the races. The important thing about the commissioning is uh, is that we will we will then have access to two shafts: our old four shaft, which is what we run the, the the mine on at the moment, and we'll have the new central shaft. So the new central shaft will take up some of the burden of uh, of extracting either waste or or mineralized ore. And uh, that will free up four shaft to do more tons and what, whatever else, or however else Dana splits it up. So that enables us to do the ramp up. So it, it's really exciting. So equipping finishes this year, commissioning then starts and, and flows into 2021. Um, our production ramps up in 2021 and we reach our target run rate of 80,000 ounces in 2022. But it's transformation, isn't it? Really, you know, a five-year project uh, you go take you from fifty-three thousand ounces a year up to eighty thousand ounces of gold per year, um, and you've, you've you've broken the back of it now, Steve. So I guess the the capital expenditure is going to start to fall away. So that's got to be good news for profitability and cash flow and and future dividends, I guess. Yes, Tim. Um the the this is the last year of of big capital expenditure probably in the region of 20 21 22 million dollars again this year um then next year it is uh, much less because there is no and when i talk sorry let me just go back when i talk about 21 22 million dollars of capex that's not all central shaft so a major proportion is central shaft then we've got exploration we've got deep level drilling we've got sustaining capital so you've got all the components of capital but as of next year there won't be money to be spent on um, on central shaft so then the capital money will be spent on development uh deep drilling and sustaining capex and it it'll probably be 50 percent of what we're spending today and um, that will slowly reduce again and uh, as we finish the development drives that support the new central shaft. So on a go forward basis, you've got declining capex, increasing gold production in ounces and uh, a very nice gold price, which people a lot brighter than us are, are predicting and, and justifying a, a strong gold price in the future. So you can do the numbers yourself. Eighty thousand ounces. Uh, uh, we've indicated costs of uh, somewhere between seven and eight hundred dollars an ounce, all in sustaining. Uh, pick your gold price. Blanket is going to generate a a good amount of free cash flow. Capex is not going to be too demanding. We'll pay our taxes, and uh, dividends will flow from Blanket into Caledonia. And at the moment, we're spending four million. There's going to be there's going to be, I think, more more available depending on how the board decides to go forward. So you've got the headroom to increase that if you so choose. The company's in a fabulously strong position. Currently listed on in London on the AIM market, uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, but you have recently delisted in Toronto, where you're on the TSXV. Um, why did you choose to delist in Toronto at this time? Um, Tim, we are superbly supported uh, in the North American region uh, on the NYSE American uh, Exchange. And uh, since our formal listing there in 2017, I think it was, our liquidity and the interest and the trading volumes on the NYSE market have, have just exploded. And uh, that was the purpose of, of going on to a recognized uh, exchange in the North American market. Um, to have two uh, North American markets um, just didn't seem to make sense. And when we, when we looked at the administrative burden, the, the cost of, of having TSX as well, the NYSE American is a very, very good alternative for our shareholders in that part of the world. And we felt it just uh, it just uh, was the right thing to do to consolidate our our listings and uh, get liquidity into two core markets, and uh, that was the that was the prime reason for for taking a voluntary delisting, and uh, yeah, we did that I think on June the nineteenth, 
and um, yeah, we go forward. We're very happy with what's happening on Aussie American and uh, AIM is an important market to us. Very, very much smaller though, unfortunately, than the NYSE, but uh, it gives us two areas to focus on and uh, that's what we will be doing. Okay. Um, I, I can't let this interview go by, unfortunately, in this year of not asking you the COVID question, I'm afraid. Um, how, how have you come through COVID down at the Blanket Mine? Um, we have, uh, we have uh, survived uh, on a day-to-day -day basis extremely well. Uh, we have practiced since uh, lockdown started, um, very, very strict access control to the, to the mine. Um, and uh, we, we have to just continue doing that. So social distancing, tons of PPE, education, 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 um, it is in our interest to, to keep producing because we've got, we've got a, a relatively large workforce and, um, you know, if you just let them disperse, to be honest, they're at more risk by leaving the property than they are on the property and working. And, and having, having had a very strict uh, access control and effective lockdown on the blanket property uh, since the end of March now, we we have we have pretty much created a a quarantine environment, so we've done well. Management has done extremely well at the mine. Um, supply chains continue to work, so uh, we are serviced from South Africa, where we buy a lot of our material, and obviously that does mean we've got people coming in and out. So we have to be diligent about screening and testing where, where appropriate. Um, but Tim, as we stand today, um, uh, there is uh, there is a, a clean bill of health. Uh, although there is there is COVID infection in Zimbabwe and South Africa, um, and and it's and it's rising unfortunately in both areas. But uh, we just carry we carry on doing what what has worked so far, and you know God willing, um, you know all our people stay healthy, and that's that's our primary objective. It is worth saying you are. Um in the southwest of Zimbabwe, in a very rural setting outside the village of Gwanda. And um, you, the mine camp is, is quite uh, self-contained, isn't it, with shops, schools, hospitals? Is, is that right? Yes, that's quite right. That's quite right. Um, obviously, um, people still need to, to leave the property to, to go and conduct certain aspects of their personal business. Um, so, so we have to allow that. But uh, yes, we are isolated. We are relatively self-sufficient, and uh, that has enabled us to to be um, protective over our over our people. We've got you know we've got sixteen hundred odd employees. They've got their families living on the mine property with us. They've got their children. So we've got a we've got a large responsibility for three to four thousand people. Um, and as you know, you know. Uh, people people don't like to be locked up. We've seen it all the all around the world, um, and there are there are other dynamics in Zimbabwe that we're all aware of, which makes it which makes it a, a relatively tough place. So we need to work very closely with our people to make sure that uh, their needs are met, uh, but the 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 business and uh, our employees are protected. And therefore, access control is just uh, is non-negotiable, uh, apart from following the, the the absolute strict protocols of screening and testing. Well, thank you, Steve. That was Steve Curtis, Chief Executive of Caledonia Mining. Caledonia is listed on the uh, London AIM market and in the New York Stock Exchange, both with the same ticker of CMCL. Market capitalization of around one hundred and thirty-eight million pounds sterling. Costs are coming down, dividends are going up, the gold price is in a great place. Thank you, Steve. We'll hope to see you soon.